I feel like I've been waiting forever for this, but Android 16 is finally here. It's rolling out first to these Pixel devices, so Pixel 6 and up, with the rest of the Android crowd, getting it a little later this year. So if you've got one of the newer Pixels, I just keep a lookout for that OTA because it should be appearing any minute now. And just to set your expectations, this is not that big Material 3 expressive UI overhaul that you might be expecting. And no, we're not gonna see desktop mode here in this Android 16 stable release either. According to our sources, all that stuff is gonna come a little bit later on down the line. And especially when you see that Material 3 expressive, that's gonna come sometime in early September. And I know this might be a little bit disappointing and it does feel a little bit like a Android 15.5 update rather than a big fully fledged Android 16 update, but there are a few little things that you should know about this update, and there's a few little nice additions here as well. And if Android 16 is not enough for you, then Google have also given us a pixel drop at the same time. So it's gonna be a long video. It's gonna be split up into three parts. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's learn everything that you can get right now in Android 16. And finally, one of these features that I've been waiting for forever now is finally here, and we're gonna be getting live updates in Android 16. Now, we do have to wait a little while for these to show as persistent notifications on the lock screen because at the moment, that hasn't been rolled out by Google. So they're still treated like every other notification and don't stay at the top of that notification cluster. They just have a progress bar attached to them. So it is a little bit disappointing, but it is laying the foundations for what we are gonna get. So eventually this will be available on the always on display. And you're also gonna be able to get a little card in the status bar that you can tap to expand to do a various different things but that is all coming later on in the year and that bit is not available now. But Google have also told us they're working with Samsung, Oppo, Xiaomi, Vivo and OnePlus to get this working all on their devices as well. And again, that will come later on in the year. Okay, sticking with notifications and the OS is now group forcing notifications together. If you get loads of notifications from one app, then Android 16 is forced grouping notifications from single apps just to help it not be so overwhelming by notifications. And it also makes them just a little bit more organized. You'll still get that classic banner of where those notifications are grouped with the little number just at the side of it. So it'll tell you how many notifications you have, but now the OS is forcing this to happen to all notifications. Now, an update to accessibility, and Google have worked really hard here to bring people who use hearing aids with their pixels an even better experience. Current LE hearing devices use their built-in mics for audio input, but with Android 16, you can now switch to your phone's microphone to make calls, and this just means that calls will be a lot clearer in really noisy environments by picking up your voice. This is a great little update from Google, and Android 16, what it'll do is also natively let you control your hearing devices directly from your phone. Keeping your phone safe and security is a big push for Google in Android 16, as it should be, and now what they're letting you do is turn on advanced protection right on your phone. This gives your phone what Google call an array of robust security features. This is meant to make sure that you are safe from any potential threats from apps, website, or scam calls. So when you search for this in settings, you'll toggle device protection on and it will ask you if you want to restart your phone. Once you turn this on, it will also disable sideloading as well, just to make sure that you are not getting anything downloaded onto your phone that shouldn't be there. So if you want to sideload, make sure you don't turn this on, otherwise you won't be able to do it. It will also avoid those 2G networks as well as they are just less secure. And coming in an update later this year, it will also add the ability to restart your phone if it's been locked for three days. I get it, it's not the flashiest update that you will ever see, but it is important and Google taking your privacy seriously on your phone is something I reckon is it's a good thing. Let me draw back the curtain for a second. And what happens usually when there's a new Android update is that Google will give us a blog post that explains everything new that is coming in that Android version. So for this case, Android 16, but sometimes they don't mention everything. So we've gone through Android 16 and we're gonna tell you a couple of things that were not in that blog post that are still coming with the update. And first off is HDR screenshots. Like if you're screenshotting something, you tend to want to show exactly what you see at that time. But if you took a screenshot of HDR content, it would still save it in SDR. So these HDR screenshots are PNG files with HDR gain mapping embedded in them. So when you go through the Photos app, you'll definitely notice the difference between regular and HDR screenshots. 
Back in Android 15, devs and apps were forced to use edge-to-edge -edge display, so you could get a nicer, more full and enjoyable experience using those apps, especially on foldable devices. And now with Android 16, the ability to opt out of edge to edge has finally been removed. So now you'll see a lot more apps giving you that full screen experience in Android 16. Predictive back is also now enabled by default when you're using those three button navigation gestures. This means that you're able to see a preview of where that back action will take you. So if it goes back to another app, you'll see a full preview of that before you complete the full back action. Android 16 is also gonna be able to support that advanced professional video codec. So basically what this means is that you'll be able to record higher quality video on supported devices with less battery drain. You'll also be able to record higher resolution content with less compression while also eating up less storage space for high quality videos. So if you were to encode a 4K video with the APB codec, it should take up less space, but still maintain better quality. There are also seven new emojis coming to Android 16, thanks to Unicode 16.0. These new emojis are face with bags under their eyes, which I feel like is almost a personal attack, fingerprint, leafless tree, root vegetable, harp, shovel, splatter, and there is also a new flag. So if you've been wanting any of those seven new emojis in Android 16 and you've been waiting for it, then this is the one that you might need to update to. There is also double press for wallet on the power button. Now, I'm not sure how many people will use this, but Android 16 now lets you double press that power button to open Google Wallet. And this for me has been used for opening the camera for I don't know how long. So I don't know whether I will actually change this, but if you fancy a change, you can head into gestures and swap that around from the camera to the wallet if you ever need quick access to your wallet. And a feature coming to help people stop spamming you with notifications is something called notification cooldown. This is if you get a lot of notifications in a short space of time from the same app. Android 16 will lower the notification sound from that app and minimize those alerts for up to 60 seconds. So you just aren't bombarded with all those notifications. If you did want to see those notifications that you got in the cooldown period, all you have to do is to swipe from the top of the screen and you can see them all as you normally would. But it is important to know your most important contacts won't be cooled down by Android 16. And going back to security for a second, there's a really nice feature coming in Android 16. And this is the anti-scam feature that is being added during calls. Now, what this does is it stops you from changing certain settings or or trying to enable the side loading permissions for apps when you are on the phone. This is because scammers are just known to ask to change that sort of information when you're on the phone to them. So Google is stopping this during phone calls. Okay, breathe. Now that is a lot of what is coming to Android 16, but we still have the pixel drop to go through and the next lot of features that I'm about to mention are coming to all Android devices. Not all of them are available straight away, but some of them are definitely coming soon and some of them you can use right now. And the first one here is a redesigned image editor. If you spend a bit of time adding some AI magic to your photos inside the image editor on Google Photos, you'll notice a new redesigned image editor. And I feel like this is a little bit of a look at what Material 3 Expressive will bring in the later part of the year with that big UI overhaul. You'll get this new AI Enhance button and once you tap on the item to either remove it or edit it, there is then this drop down that gives you the options of Erase, Move or Reimagine. And depending on what you tap on, you might see some extra options like Sharpen, Focus and Add Light. I really like this new redesign and I actually can't wait to get my hands on it. But Google did mention in the blog post that this is coming soon. So annoyingly, this is not something that we're gonna be able to get our hands on right now today, but it is something that is coming in Android 16 eventually. Next is if you use RCS group chats, then you can customize these just a little bit more. So it's a little bit more personal than before. You now get the option to give that group chat a custom name. So if your chat is set up for a holiday, you can name it something like Holiday Friends 2025. And as well as that, you can set a custom icon for each individual RCS group chat message. You can either pick your own from your device or you can pick one that is suggested from Google. And if that group chat ever gets annoying and there's too many messages, you can actually then mute that group chat for like a set 
period rather than muting it forever, which is a nice little update. Next is an update to safety check. And I already think this is one of Google's best features and it's just now getting even better. Now, if you don't know what safety check is, if you're walking alone or maybe running alone, you can actually set a schedule to check in with specific contacts so they know that you're safe. And if you don't reply, then your location gets shared with those contacts. But what you couldn't do before was extend that safety check time without starting a whole new safety checks. Android 16 changes that. So if you end up wanting to run for longer or you stop off at a store, you can now get the option to add a time to that current safety check. So anything from five minutes to 30 minutes, or you can add your own custom time extension. And I really like this. One of my favorite updates coming to Android 16 is actually for Wear OS. And you can now finally pay on your Pixel Watch for transport without having to actually unlock the watch and go into Google Wallet. Apple Watches have had this express transit feature for a while where you basically tap your watch onto the terminal and you're through. So no need to unlock the watch. And now you can do this on the Pixel Watch without having to open your Google Wallet before you get to the pay terminal. And it might not seem like the biggest update, but for people who use public transport, a lot. I think this is really, really good. And moving on to Emoji Kitchen. Now I know people like this, not that I ever use it, but you can now make more combinations to make something either truly unique or truly terrifying, depending on how you look at it. And then you can share those stickers directly in Gboard. And that is a lot of what is coming in Android 16. Maybe not everything, but it's a good chunk of it. And a lot of those features you can go and use right now, but some of them are coming soon, like the image editor. So we just have to be a little bit patient before we can see those and use them on our phones. But like I said earlier on in the video, Google also gave us a pixel drop today. So let's talk about what's new with the pixel drop. Now, first up of this pixel drop goodness is the pixel VIPs. And this is a new widget that you can place on your home screen that's meant to help you get to some of your favorite contacts quicker. This widget will be under contacts and you can add up to four of your favorite contacts onto this. Now, Google suggests to get the most out of this VIP widget, you should add things like birthdays, email addresses, actual addresses to your VIP contacts. When you tap on one of those contacts on the widget, you can actually see your last call and message with them. And thankfully, this even works if that call or message was inside WhatsApp, which is fantastic. Those VIPs that you set up as well can also bypass Do Not Disturb. And once you click on that contact, you can even see their live location if they've shared that with you already. Now that Do Not Disturb only works on Google Messages and WhatsApp, so not any other third party app. But this is actually a pretty powerful new part of the contacts app and a nice new widget. And I think a lot of people might start to use this. Do you create a lot of stickers inside Pixel Studio? Well, yeah, me neither. But now you can create those stickers directly from Gboard. This means no more swapping apps to create those stickers. So previously you'd have to swap into Pixel Studio to create the sticker, save it or copy it, and then head back to the message you were typing. But now you can create it and send it right within that app without having to leave. And you can make stickers from photos in the camera roll and the background will just be automatically removed. There will also be an update to captions as well. And Google is making them more expressive. This update basically captures the emotion of what is happening on the screen. So for for example, if the commentator is shouting during a game, that will be capitalized and it can even elongate words. So if someone is shouting like goal or shoot, then you'll be able to get those like lots of O's. You kind of get it. There are also some pixel features that are now rolling out to more people depending on where you live and what devices you have. So for example, Satellite SOS is now rolling out to people who can use that feature in countries like Australia. The Recorder app can now provide AI generated summaries in French and German. If you have a Pixel 8, then Clear Voice is now coming to that recorder app, which is nice to see. Camera education is coming, so you can tap the question mark in the camera app and see visual examples and guidance on certain features, so you can use them a little bit better and understand them. And I know people have been waiting for this one for a long time, but Pixel phones will now give you the information about your battery health. So telling you things like remaining capacity based on your charging and usage habits. And if you're like me, you've been waiting for this one for a while, but the pixels it's coming to is a little bit weird. So it's coming to the Pixel 8a and newer, but it isn't supported on the Pixel 8 or the 8 Pro. And don't ask why, I actually don't know why Google is doing that. So that is a lot, maybe not everything, but a lot of what we are gonna see in Android 16 starting today and coming in the next few months. 
Now, I know it's a bit disappointing that we don't see any big updates here. I mean, there is live activities, which I really like. But besides that, it's a little bit more refinement than anything groundbreaking. But we do have at least Material 3 Expressive to look forward to later on in the year, like in Q3. And Google has given us a little bit of Material 3 Expressive just sprinkled in amongst this Android 16 update, but it is not the big UI change that we hope for. So you're going to have to wait for that. But let me know what you think of Android 16. Are you a little bit disappointed with what it's given us? Or are you okay with these smaller refinements knowing that the big update is yet to come? Well, let me know in the comments below. Before we head off, why not subscribe to the Android Authority channel? And if you do that, then I will see you in the next video.